Hi everyone, so in this lesson we're going to look at the key macroeconomic indicators of performance of an economy. I break this down to the acronym IC SPEED. Let's have a look at each of the component parts that I've identified here. Firstly, inflation, that you want the general rise in prices to be relatively modest, but consistent. This helps people with their expectations, so firms and households can actually manage expectations of future price growth. Uh, and it helps to ensure that investment levels are likely to be healthy within an economy. Of course, it also ensures that purchasing power isn't eroded very quickly and that real wages aren't diminishing. OK, next up, we thought the uh, current account and the balance of payments. Now, the current account is financed by borrowing on the capital account, as we'll see in later lessons. Uh, so therefore, you don't want too large a current account uh, deficit because the financing of that can be troublesome and that has caused uh, so-called current account crises in the past. Okay, next up, standard of living, that you want to have a good and improving standard of living. Now this can mean different things to different people. Uh, typically the standard of living is being referred to as the GDP per capita and focusing on the gross domestic product per capita. But yet there are numerous problems with that. For instance, it doesn't consider the actual distribution of income across an economy and that you may have a high level of inequality, for example. Further to that, it doesn't include other things such as education and uh, the actual level of life expectancy and health within those economies. So therefore, some people favor uh, and certainly LEDCs do favour the HDI, the Human Development Index model of actually assessing the standard of living. Next up, productivity and international competitiveness. So you want productivity to be increasing uh, to facilitate so-called cutting edge growth for MEDCs, uh, so those highly developed economies, okay, like the US, the UK, uh, and the European countries. Um, further to this, you want to have uh, a good level of international competitiveness amongst your exports. You want them to be priced fairly according to your exchange rate, which you want to be fairly stable and consistent. Um, and again, that helps to improve business uh, and consumer confidence. Uh, okay, but further to this, you want them to be quite sophisticated. You want them to have uh, very, very differentiated aspects to, to them so that they, their consumers have a real incentive to actually buy those products in particular. Uh, when it comes to economic growth, yes, you, people like to see this increasing and governments like to see economic growth taking place because it means that further to this, that employment is likely to be higher within the economy and therefore unemployment is likely to be lower. But it can also be a, a sign of standards of living improving. It's not necessarily always the case, as we'll see, because Increasing GDP can cause negative, so-called negative externalities, such as pollution, of course. And then we've got distribution of income, uh, so that you don't want too much inequality taking place within a society. And this tends to be measured by a measurement that we'll see a lot of later on, and that is the Gini coefficient. Okay, uh, so... All in all, that's those are the kind of key elements that we've got here. You could, of course, add in some other areas. Um, for instance, pursuing uh, the eradication of the fiscal deficit has been a real priority for the UK government over the last sort of eight years or so, but not a huge amount of progress has been managed um, on that front. So making sure that the uh, fiscal finances don't go too out of order. Uh, is, is very important here. Now it's from these key economic indicators that we can then derive uh, the key macroeconomic objectives for the government, uh, which is likely to focus on the GDP, the growth, the employment level, as well as making sure that the current account is well managed and inflation levels. OK, so from these key indicators, we can determine what likely objectives are going to be most important for a given economy. However, in pursuing any one of these, 
it can cause conflict. So for instance, if you're pursuing low and stable uh, inflation, that may mean the economic growth may have to slow as a direct result of that. So there can be a direct conflict here and we'll see that this in future lessons. Furthermore, we've also got to think which indicators can actually be attained at the same point in time. So we mentioned, for, in for instance, how increasing GDP would help with reduce, un uh, reduce unemployment and increase employment. Uh, OK, and then we've got to think, well, what is actually the government's priority in pursuing any one of these indicators? Uh, and different governments have different views and different means of actually wanting to attain these different uh, economic indicators. All right. So there we go. Uh, it's a crucial lesson. This. OK, we'll look at these in more de detail in uh, future lessons. Thanks, guys.